welcome back to Tech Talks Podcast. I'm Tech Write, your host, and we are still in the book per <clears throat> Perfect Love by Joyce Meyer. And today we're going to be discussing highlighted moments um, in chapter four, the anxiety and anger of the perfectionist. <laughs> that would probably be, be me. And I didn't realize how much of um, one I have tendencies to be um, when I when I was reading this chapter and then the few other ones after that. Um, so yeah, God has been um, showing me through this book and just through prayer alone and just the interaction that I've had um, with him and, and, and by this tool, the book that he's been pulling to help minister to me and bringing, bringing to the light things and areas that I didn't really see before until I have read this and I'm like, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm learning to just kind of let go. I'm learning to not just have it all together and be perfect. Um, as you know, some of you know that last week or last two episodes, I was doing this recording while I was doing laundry. You know how it is. You're trying to hit some things, multitask, get her done, get her done mode. And um, I didn't realize that you would be able to hear water going through the pipes um, as I was recording. And I just thought, oh... The perfectionist side of me wanted to stop completely and erase everything. But then there's this other side of me that's like, you need to let go and just do it. Otherwise, you'll never have time to do this. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. So I thought, I'm just going to leave it because, one, it will keep me humble. And two, at least you'll realize that I don't always have it together and I'm human and that... um yeah, I will probably will never get this to be perfect. But like we learned last week, if you um, if you're just new here, well, of course, welcome. But if you were here last week, we talked about that our gifts or the way we try to serve God may not look perfect, but we have a perfect heart, and that was so freeing. Don't you say that was so freeing? Yeah, we have good intentions. We have a good heart. But maybe it didn't, maybe it wasn't delivered as a so called perfect picture that we had hoped in our mind to be. And I'm learning that what's more important is the heart. Okay, I love this little quote on page 35, very beginning on chapter four. Um, they say that nobody is perfect. Then they will tell you practice makes perfect. I wish they make up their minds. Winston Churchill. <laughs> I thought that was so cute. I want to go to my notes real quick with you guys that the Lord has kind of brought to my attention personally. Um, I wrote down, being a perfectionist leads to burnout. I... I'm so guilty of being burnt out so many times. And it's because I'm trying to, in my mind, make sure I check all the things in my head that I need to do in order to be a good wife and mother. Like, oh my gosh, um, did my t did my children brush their teeth? And did I bathe them and feed them? Oh yes, then I'm okay, I'm okay. If I forget to like get them to brush their teeth and I go to bed, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm such a horrible mom. <laughs> Oh, but you know what? Being perfectionist, I've come to learn, leads to burnout. Because I think there's no such thing as being perfect. But we still can have a perfect heart, so that's that's good. Um, the underlying meaning is basically saying, I'm trying to trust me more than God. I believe that's what the Lord has brought to my mind when it comes to the conclusion after reading what I've read and in prayer, this is just my notes I'm sharing with you guys. Being a perfectionist um, leads to you to not rest. You're unable to rest. And I think that's so true. Like I think 
when I physically rest, I'm still not resting in my emotions in my mind. They're still going because I'm still in that perfectionist mode uh, and I feel guilty and I feel sad and angry at myself. And then, then I'm starting to get scared that I'm gonna make the same mistakes because I, I just can't get over myself, you know? I also like that she said that um, we're like lawmakers over ourselves. And I'm gonna read to you on page 43 a moment. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I had it, I had it open. <laughs> 43 yes um oh and i really like this i think that we often make laws out of things because we are afraid to trust ourselves to be led by god's spirit mm. and then i will just keep reading i urge you to refuse to live a life legalistic and to trust god that he will teach you how to clear, clearly be guided by him in all things. That was something I really needed to um, meditate on. Like, oh my gosh, like, do I really have those laws? And am I really that legalistic over myself and my family? Um, and the truth was like, yeah, it kind of stung a little bit, but then again, it was freeing. You know what I mean? And here's my other notes about Jesus on the flip side. Jesus is like that law breaker. He gives rest. Um, and I'm going to read this quote to you on page 44. <clears throat> the, next, the next thing here that I really liked that helped me to kind of basically get over myself. <laughs> Page 44. And there's so many highlighted moments. You guys, that's why I, might, I encourage you to get this book. I like this part here. Don't waste your time asking God to change something that he has already given you the power to change. Don't complain and live a silently angry life while at the same time continu continuing to do the very things that make you angry. <sighs> That was, that was like, well, yeah, okay. Thanks, Joyce. Don't waste your time asking God to change something that he has already given you the power to change. Well, how is that? Well, one, it's one decision at a time. You deliberately choose God. You deliberately say, I don't understand this, but I'm gonna trust you. God, I don't quite see this clearly, but I'm going to trust you. God, I'm a little bit scared and worried, but I'm going to trust you. You see how that helps make one decision. Um, you're like basically one decision away from following God instead of yourself. Don't complain and live a silently angry life while at the same time continuing to do the very things that make you angry. I am guilty of that. But thank you, Jesus, that he sets us free, right? And then we're going to close. Um, here is the last part on page 45. Believe in the one whom, sent, who, whom he sent. And I believe, um, I believe that that is so important. It's like believe in the one who sent Jesus. Believe in him. Lastly, on page 46, more than anything, God wants us to trust him and to believe his word. You can get off the treadmill of trying to be perfect because you cannot buy or earn God's love or favor, not even with a perfect performance. It simply is not for sale. If we can't earn God's approval, then how can we get it? Receiving God's grace that is provided in Jesus is the answer to this problem. All right, that is all I have for you, my friends. Until next time, be embraced by grace and just receive his love for you. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.